so I've just imported this new track and you can see that it says 126.99 and there's no extra markers so that's ideal sometimes you import them from a DJ mix and it's got all these extra little markers to indicate that there's tempo changes if that happens and you really want to use that one you can click on any one of the yellow markers press Apple A to select them all and then delete. Now we're going to go down here since it was imported from an mp3 it's off by a point decimal so we're going to type in 127 because we know that it's actually that tempo. Now I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to grab this one, the first beat and move it over to the obvious first beat of the song. So it's right on. And that's pretty much all you have to do. This um, this playhead moves with the one when you're moving it. And that's where the song's going to start. And you want to make sure that this playhead is all the way at the end. Because if it was part way into the song, it would cut it off. And you don't want that. If you're playing a track, it will just stop dead in its tracks once it hits that. So you want to move that to the end. And then you can go over here and push save so that it saves um, in the file accompanying the mp3. That way, um, every time you load this track into live, it'll be set up like that and you won't have to do it again. And then we play it. That's the other track. check to see that when you're playing the track this is counting one, two, three, four in time with the beats of the, the song. So if we play it again you'll see that one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And the major changes will always happen on the one. And uh, just for for fun let's import something that we know is from a DJ mix. That way we can see what you would have to do in the most challenging situation. That's pretty easy, like... What about mixing from one, that first track into the next track? Oh, uh, the mixing? You know, the, um, pressing the one, two button and the... Yeah, okay, so we've got the EQs on each track and this is set so that the bass kill kills any frequencies below whatever we set this to and so when I press the number one oops see I started typing into that which we don't want to do we just want that to be set to what we want it to be so if I click up here and then I, I press one it will kill and bring back in the bass Mm-hmm. Okay. So we set that with the key, which I can show in some other video. Now, uh, we've done the same thing for track two. So we can bring this up so that when we kill it, there's actually less bass. And we, oop, I did the same thing, typing it in. You want to click off of something when you click on it, and you you can type numbers in it. If you don't, and you press those numbers, you're going to type in numbers that you don't necessarily want on accident, so you got to click off of it onto something else. I'm going to bring these up. Okay, so if I'm playing this one, I'm going to play it, and then bring in the bass by pressing the number one. Okay. So then I've got this other track. If I press, if I double click it, it'll show me audio here. I've already lined it up. If I press shift tab, it switches to the effects on the track, which is this EQ. I'm pressing 2, does the bass. We want the bass off when we bring in the track. So I'm going to fade it in about halfway, and then I'm going to come up to the, the track that we're going to bring in, and I'm going to press play just before when I'm going to start. So I'm going to listen to the song. I 
feel a major change coming. And then we press it before that. And now it's coming. So I'm gonna fade it in real slow. Making it come in very subtly. And when I'm ready, I can press one and two to switch the bases. I haven't done it yet. It's still the bass from track one. So you'll see, you'll see the the low switch out when I press one and two. Alright, switch the bases. Now I'm gonna start fading out the track that was playing. The new track, and then I go up here and I press stop on the one that was playing. And then we can go to the next track and do the same thing. We we'll make sure that the bass is off, and then press three to turn it off. I'm gonna turn this to halfway. I'm gonna wait till I feel the major change. One, two, three, four, one. And just before, I'm going to press start, and it starts right on the one. So it'll go to the next one and start automatically on that. Well, last time you taught me, you taught me how to look down here and watch it. You can do that. You can if this is playing. Visually, it's a lot easier. Double click on the track that's playing, it'll show up in this window down here. And you can see the major numbers where stuff happens. Like 65 is one of the major ones. You know, 81, 89. Those are all spots where you can start the next track. So when you see it coming to that, you just press start on the next track. That's another way to do it. And then you can start fading this one out. You switch the bases when you're ready by pressing 2 and 3. So if I do shift tab, it'll switch back to this effect view. You don't have to, but if you want to see, make sure that it's the track that you want has the bass on. So now I've just turn this song 3's bass on. Turn up the send. This isn't necessary, but this is a cool. You can do effects this way. You can just send it to this reverb. I mean, this is just a little extra thing you can do for fun sometimes. Like add a little echo or different effects. That's just like more advanced. You don't have to worry about that for just basic mixing. So instead of just having a, a three-channel EQ here, you can have different effects and program. 